All right, guys. Fucking Spawn. Spawn the Spawner, right? Spawn. Why would you pick this character? Because it's fucking Spawn, all right? You want to do Spawn things and get big fucking Spawn damage. Spawn is known for one thing and one thing alone. He hits fucking hard. Big fucking damage. If you're looking for a character that is fucking badass, the ultimate edgelord of edgelords, and is still somewhat kind of a ninja, and you want to fucking do the most damaging fucking hits you ever imagined, Spawn is the guy for you. Now, as far as the character archetype, Spawn, we all consider to be the neutral god. If you're all about that nooch and fiction for a hit and making them hurt for pressing buttons out of range, that's Spawn, the neutral god. Or I guess the neutral demon? Neutral demon. That nooch. All about it. Anyways, for a beginner build, there's pretty much one build for Spawn, and it is Charging Hell Spawn and a thing, right? That's kind of the way it's going for Spawn. He's got a bunch of other shit, and there's a lot of builds that you can do to make him work. But we went with the Hell Chain Command Grab because, quite frankly, for a beginner's guide, like throwing in an easy Command Grab that turns you invisible is definitely the kind of shit that people who just bought the game yesterday would want to be doing. So if you just bought this game, and you're like, yo, I want to be Spawn, and I want to fucking do cool shit, right? Turn him invisible with a chain grab. That's some pretty cool shit. So anyways, going into the variation build, right? We have Charging Hell Spawn. It's just a nifty, like, mm, advancing move. It's not really good as a whiff punish because it's a bit on the slow side. So you see it starts up at 26 frames. It's not very fast. It's more of every time I hit you, I'm comboing into it, all right? Like, if I touch you with anything, we're going into this, and we're getting spawn damage. 309 for one bar, 337 for one bar, and that's not even the hard combos you can do. That's not even the optimal shit. He gets damage, right? And it all comes from that charge. Charge is integral to spawn. I can see why it's not a baseline move, though, because he has a lot of other shit that if he just had charge... On every build, he would be easily, easily an, uh, an unfair character. So I get why charge is a two-slot move and you have to equip it because he's got some nasty stuff. The other move that we have in this build is going to be the chain. It's a grab. It's weird for being a grab because anything, usually grabs will catch you if you're crouch blocking. But as you can see here, right, we'll set him to stance hold and crouch. Even when he is blocking... Right? It just goes through them. They have to, have to, have to be standing. They have to be standing for this grab to hit. But if the grab hits, right, you get some decent damage if you meter burn it. And you turn invisible, right? And you just do weird shit. They don't know where you're going to hit them, right? And even more cooler about the grab, right, is if I get invisible, right, and I hit another grab. Hold on, let me do it right, right? I get the grab, right? Now I'm invisible. I do another grab, and we get a crushing blow. Now, granted, that's going to cost all of your meter, but to have an invisible, like, 30% unblockable crushing blow, yeah, that might be worth spending the bar. That, that can close. That's a round closer. If you're at the end of a round, and they're at about the 30% mark, and you've got four sticks of butter, and you go invisible... You're done. Like, that's a round closer. It's very hard to avoid that because Spawn actually has uh, pretty scary overheads. Um, they are fairly reactable, but that thing, you can sneak in there, and it's just fucking cool to be invisible. All right? So, anyways, going into his notable normals, the most important normal, in my opinion, is 3-4. Look at this thing, right? It literally covers almost half the screen, right? You can do that. It's two hits. It confirmed for a combo. Easy peasy. One of the key things with spawn is the back dash 3-4, right? So when you're up in here, you do a down one, back dash 3-4, right? Down one, back dash 3-4. Four. four two, back dash 3-4. Oh, you wanted to chase me? No, I don't think so, right? I'm going to go in. I'm going to back up. Go in, back dash 3-4. 3-4 is a move that you can just kind of throw out there. It's two hits. It's a long animation, so it's pretty easy to hit confirm. Do note that 3-4, where is it? 3-4, the first hit is a high. And standing three, pretty slow, right? It's a 12-frame startup, right? 
So a lot of characters like Sub Zero is just gonna slide under that shit. Um, a lot of characters, some really good low profiling moves, especially characters with really good down fours like uh, Garrus. They can blow the string up, so be careful about it. But the way to stop people from blowing it up is back one, which is a mid, right? Back one, two, ends in the overhead. Death on block. Very much death on block. But as you're navigating the neutral, dashing in, right? You do the three, four, they start ducking it. Okay, back one. Back one is also a really, really good pun uh, shimmy off of this one button, right? You can back dash, right? So if you look at my inputs, you see the back dash. You get just out of poke range, just barely out of poke range, and you can hit that thing. Back one is a very, very good mid uh, whiff punish, but it's also a good like long range mid to keep them from ducking under your uh, chains. Just know that if you finish the string, even though right, you do get combos off of it, it is death on block. But because we have the grab, which catches you if you're standing, right? The second hit of back one, two is an overhead. They have to block it standing. But if they block standing in anticipation of the overhead, that's when you sneak in the grab, right? Because the grab has to be blocked low or at least ducked. So that's like a little bit of a mind game mix up there that you can use off the back one. But even by itself, back one is an amazing button to just throw out. Like you don't even have to like do any of the follow-ups that just control so much space like look at how far out that thing hits from very very good space control very very good mid guess what else he has another fucking good mid four two one right four two on its own is an advancing mid now four two 16 frame startup a little bit on the slow end but if you're spacing it right 16 frames from out here is pretty hard to react to right now he's got a follow up a four two one up to that move is death on block, right? Four, two, one, up to minus 14. Very easy to punish if you don't space it properly. If you space it properly, it's a little difficult to punish for certain characters. But even then, who fucking cares? Like, you could just stagger four, two, one, and be minus six, right? And a common tactic is to just do four, two, one, and amplify fireball. Give yourself some, uh, you know, give yourself some safety, possibly some press frames, depending on how you space it out. He does have four, two, three, and four, two, three, four. These I don't ever use. That is death on block. That is death on block. That, you could hit confirm into that for like pretty decent damage. But again, it's like super unsafe. So I hardly ever use four, two, three and any of the extensions off it. Four, two, one gets the job done of I need a mid to advance on them because they keep ducking my standing three, four. So four, two, one's going to be your go-to. Um, you could certainly try to use four, two, three, like maybe if you're hit confirming off of a jump in, but I generally recommend annoy, ignoring these two uh, extensions to the four, two, right? So next important move is going to be back four. It's a sweep. And that sweep has obnoxious range for a sweep. Also, it's two hits. So most sweeps are one hit. Spawn sweep is two hits. So if people block the first hit and think, oh, okay, now it's time to go in, they're going to get hit with the second hit. Also, like I said, it covers a lot of range, and it's a low, right? So you're often going to mix up between 3-4 and the sweep, right? So you'll go in, you'll hit a back, down one, back dash 3-4, or down one, back dash sweep. Depending on how they're answering your 3-4, if they're neutral ducking or anything like that, just throw the sweep out. Like, it's really freaking good. And if we look at the frame data on the sweep, it's 13 frames on startup, but minus 6 on block. So it's safe. Like, there's not much they can do about it. The only downside to the sweep is it is 13 frames on startup, which is really, really slow at range 1. So if you're trying to sweep someone up close, you're going to eat a lot of low pokes, right? So you want to space it just at the tip, right? Just at the tip. Just at about the range where you're going to be throwing out 3-4, that's when you're going to be throwing out the sweep. Next notable move, 1-1, one, one, right? You got 1-1. One, one. Now, 1-1 one, one on its own is very, very strong. If you look at the frame data on 1-1, one, one, it is plus 2 on block, which gives you enough time to backdash 3-4 or backdash sweep if they try to answer it, right? And the reason why they'll try to answer is because you have 1-1-2, one, one, right? Now, 1-1-2, one, one, the follow-up, minus 8, a little bit punishable, quasi-punishable, but you can throw it out there if you think that they're going to start interrupting stuff. But the big key here is the 1-1 one, one, back 2. Now, 1-1 one, one, back 2... On a counter hit, right, or a punish, 
Gives you a decent crushing blow. But what's notable about this is it puts you at plus seven. So if they block one, one, back two, and they're passively defending against your offense, this gives you seven frames of block advantage to just kind of start throwing shit out there and catch them with a counter hit. Uh, do note that if they do, if you do do, if you do do, 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 one, one, back two, it is slow enough for them to interrupt and not even just interrupt with a low poke, but interrupt with a full jab punish combo. So you want to be tricky about how you sneak in the 1-1 one, one back two, right? So again, 1-1 one, one shimmy into like sweep or 3-4. That's to catch them trying to low poke or shimmy back one, right? 1-1 one, one shimmy, you can do 3-4, you can do sweep, you can do back one. Either or, those are what you're going to want to use to catch pokes. If they try to advance on you with advancing moves because you've been shimmying, that's when you go for the 1-1-2. One, one, Once they start respecting the 1-1 one, one and stop doing shit afterwards, that's when you go for the 1-1 one, one back two and start fishing for the plus frame. Frames, all right, so be careful about using that string because people will try to blow it up But there are a lot of follow-up options, especially if you're fighting someone that's very very aggressive and very very mashy They're probably going to try to mash after the one one because they know they can interrupt the slow plus frames move And that opens you up to allowing to get the whiff punish on the poke. It's not very hard His micro dash gets a lot of space very very easily, right? So if you just micro dash back one you see he moves pretty far and you get your whiff punish, all right? Next important move is 2-4. It's a decent stagger, and it's decent for combo filler, right? If I get a launch, it's easy to just go 2-4 into your combo ender. Um, but eh, for the most part, 2-4 is a really good punish. It's probably one of his best punishes, all right? Now, standing 2, it is a high. It is a 10-frame high. Sort of like Devorah's standing too, in that it's really slow for a high, but you're not looking for that. You're looking at the hitbox, right? So, like, for some reason, this standing too, even though it's a high, it, 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 it hits a lot lower. If they're not neutral ducking or doing something that will low profile it, it will hit a lot lower than you think. Um, so it's useful for punishing things like Sub-Zero. Oh, wait, I have the wrong Sub-Zero variation. But Sub-Zero slide, right? Sub-Zero slide. Right. Very easy punish. Again, I have the wrong Sub-Zero variation on there, but it, it's a very decent way to get big damage, and it's a simple hit confirm. So 2-4 is something that you'll want to throw in there. Uh, if you're unsure about what punishes what, 2-4 would just be your go-to punish until you can find a more optimal punish per character matchup. Now, next important move is going to be forward 4. Now, forward 4... It's a weird move, it's a dialer string, right? So you can do four, four, one, three, right? And you have to dial the whole thing in. Uh, if you do four, four, you can hit confirm off of it. But four, four, one, three ends in a mid, and four, four, one, three is minus six on block. So it's a good string to just throw out there as a dial in, and it's very, very strong on his dash, right? So as you're playing the neutral, right? You're doing this shit, right? So they start looking for these long range moves, you can dash in and go for that. And you get two hits before you have to special cancel. So if you're really quick on your hit confirm, you can hit confirm this for a full combo. Uh, forward four is pretty slow for the range that it gets. It's 12 frames on startup. But the idea is that you're not just doing forward four when you're at range one, right? When you're in the poke range and you're doing this shit, you're not really throwing that out. You're using forward four after a dash because that's what makes it hard to react to. If I'm over here and I'm throwing shit out and you're looking for that shit and then I just dash in and do that, it's very hard to poke unless somebody is like really on point with their space control and really spamming out like uh, white noise, like down fours and shit at that range. It's very, very hard to stop dash in forward four uh, for hit for, for a full combo. And forward four is complemented by another part of Spawn's move set, which is his grab game. Uh, uh, his grab, I, I don't you usually cover these in these beginner guides, but dash grab is really, really good at spawn. Because again, if I'm doing moves here in the neutral range, and I'm doing this shit, and they're like worried about me whiffing, right? So they're looking for an attack, they're looking for maybe a jump, I can dash in and grab really, really quickly. That creates a 50-50 at range two. At range two, dash in, grab, very, very hard to react to, all right? Dash in, forward one, three, or forward four, one, three. Very hard to react to that. So at range two, Spawn actually like 
from long range has a very dangerous and scary, scary strike throw game. And not only that, like his forward grab has the big crushing blow in the corner, so you can get the big like 800% damage. Uh, but other than that, Spawn's throw game is really, really strong. Really, really strong. Don't be afraid to just dash in and grab them. They will fall for it a lot. Next move that I want to cover is Spawn's jump kick. Jump three or jump four. It has what we like to call the DLC jump kick. It has the very, very sharp angled hitbox. It also hits from very, very high up in the jump arc. So if you're jumping, you can hit this before they have enough time to react to your jump and anti-air you. So, uh, and also if you do it deep, you combo off of it. So this jump kick has a lot of utility. The only thing that stops his jump kick from being really, really excessive is that Spawn's jump is kind of ass. But because they're constantly looking at horizontal space, they're looking for chains, they're looking for capes, they're looking for you in the nooch, they're not going to anticipate the jump. So that's what makes Spawn's jump actually very, very good. Um, just use it very sparingly to be unpredictable. It's always something to throw out and say, hey, remember I can do this too. I know you're looking for these things because I'm blowing you up with them, but I can also do this. So if you use it rarely, it becomes a very, very powerful tool because it's very, very hard to stop the jump kick. Um, as for Spawn, in conclusion, his best range is going to be range two, right? Again, round one, fight. Uh, Spawn is a neutral god. He's going to be very, very good at the most neutralist of neutralist ranges, which is range two. At range two, three, four, kind of whiffs. So again, remember I said like, the range you want to play at is where things will generally whiff, so that way you can catch them trying to advance on you, and you can also move in and control the flow of the fight. So you want to stay at range two, but Spawn's got a decent projectile. He's also got the, uh, you know, he's got a decent projectile with the amplify on it that he can uh, delay. So at long ranges, Spawn is not useless. Um, he can fight at long range. He can kind of fight at close range because his down one, because of the down one buff that's universal. Um, so he does have the tools to kind of defend himself at close range, but you really want to stay right here at range two, right where they're going to walk into your chains. That's spawn. Go out there and do some fucking undead damage, baby. I swear to God, you all better hit with, you better hit it hard because it's spawn.